The story of Jacob's dream starts with chapter 27 with Isaac, who is now an old man. Which is interesting because they don't actually say how old he is, right? How old was Abraham when Abraham had Isaac? A hundred. And how old was he when he started to sacrifice Isaac? Hundred and hundred, more than a hundred, <laughs> right? We didn't actually talk about that. It's a hundred, about one hundred thirty-seven, right? So here we start this reading out with Isaac, who has two sons, and what are the two sons' names? Esau and Jacob. And have Esau and Jacob gotten along all their lives? No, not at all. Actually, the story of Esau and Jacob starts back in the womb with Jacob trying to pull Esau back. So that Jacob could be the firstborn. It's there. But Esau was still born first. So then we get to our story today in chapter 27 where Isaac calls Esau. And, and wait for me to mess up these names. Trust me. Isaac calls Esau in and says, I'm old. I'm going to die soon. Go out and kill me something good to eat before I die so I can bless you. <coughs> And the part that we miss, right, because we read Genesis 27, 1 through 4, and then we skip to what? Like verse 15 or something, right? So in verses 5 through 14, what we read is that Rebecca, and who's Rebecca? Whose wife? Isaac's wife, right? Isaac's wife, Rebecca, who likes Jacob more than she does Esau, and Isaac likes Esau more than he does Jacob. Follow along here, it's kind of hard, but Rebecca overhears Isaac tell Esau to go kill him something so that he can bless him. And what does she do? She goes out and she cooks something like Esau would have cooked. And then she takes her favorite son, Jacob, dresses him in what? The fur of a lamb, right? Why? To trick him, but why? Right, Esau was really hairy, and Jacob wasn't. So Jacob had smooth skin, but Esau didn't. So in order for to trick Isaac, right? Because Isaac can't see anymore. It says the first thing: his eyes. He's old, and his eyes are feeble, but he can hear. So in order to trick him, she makes a savory stew that Esau would have made. Covers. Jacob in lamb's hair and sends him in with it to trick Isaac into giving Jacob Esau's blessing. Wow. <laughs> so, not only did Jacob tried to take Esau's birthplace by holding him back in the womb. He now has taken his birthright blessing. All for what? Why did Jacob do all of this? Why did Jacob do all of this? Was it to make his mom happy? Was it to get back at his brother? Was it... Probably for money. Because you have to remember, right? And, and, and the question came up at a Bible study this past week is why couldn't, why couldn't Isaac just bless Esau too? Well, he could. But see, here's the thing. With, with a blessing in this time, not only was that a blessing of the father to the son, but that was a blessing of the passing on of the wealth. And the elder son got how much? Not all of it. He got two-thirds of it. The eldest son, regardless of how many sons there were, the eldest son got two-thirds of the family fortune. And then the, the other son split the other third. So here Esau at least gets a third. But, you know, in Jacob's family, if he were to give a blessing, how many sons did Jacob have? How many tribes are? Twelve. So the first son would get two-thirds, and then the other eleven would have to split third right so the the older son gets more of the, the wealth bless you but then what happens does he stick around to 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 take part of what his father has blessed him with 
No, because there's other parts to the story we haven't heard either. See, there's another reason why Rebecca doesn't really like Esau and, and Isaac is not really happy with Esau for this either. Where are they residing at this point? They're living in the land of where? I, I heard it. Somebody said it. Or maybe I'm just making it up in my head. Canaan. They're living in the land of Canaan and Esau has married a Canaanite woman. So if Isaac gives the blessing to Esau, that means that the lineage is now, now not pure because Esau has married a person of another tribe. So after all of this transpires and Isaac blesses Jacob, I'm just, whew, Isaac blesses Jacob. All of this comes to pass. Esau comes back, tries to get the blessing. Isaac says, I've already blessed you. And he goes, no, you didn't bless me. You blessed Jacob. And it's a conniving trick of, that's got all of this to happen. And so now Esau wants to kill Jacob. And, and Isaac and Rebekah send Jacob off to where? This is why he's left. This is why he's in Bethal. And, he, and he, soon here we're going to see him at the lowest point in life that he could possibly be. Right? They send him off to go back to their homeland to do what? To find a wife. Thank you, whoever said that. And he winds up finding two wives, actually, right? Rachel and Leah, sisters. But he's, he's sent off by his father to go back to their homeland to find an offspring of his mother's family. To marry so that the, the lineage can stay within their tribe because they have that blessing from Abraham, right? God said to Abraham, you will be the father of many nations because Abraham actually means father of many nations through Isaac to Jacob. And we see Isaac giving that blessing on to Jacob in part that we don't read here in the beginning of chapter 28. And then we get Jacob. At Bethal, who's come to the lowest point of his life. And what is he doing? He lay down to rest because he's on the run from his brother who wants to kill him. Going back to his mother's homeland to find a wife. And he has nothing with him. So he lays down on the ground. And he uses a rock as a pillow. He's got nothing. He's down and out. And if you think that, that, that modern day TV has anything on the, the Bible, you just need to read these stories because this is the greatest, um, you know, what are they called? What are they called? I don't even watch them. The, not soap opera, but what are the new ones? The, the live drama things that we are. The reality TV. This is the best reality TV show you could ever find, right? Because... Here you have these families, and it even goes back to, to Abraham's family, right? Because Abraham did, Abraham made his first child leave, right? And gave the birthright to the second child. Isaac is the second child of Abraham, right? And we see it again in Isaac to Jacob, right? It's this, this keeps coming back around. Jacob wasn't in all of this. He wasn't worried about pleasing God because we can actually go back and look at this and say that maybe Jacob didn't even believe in God. Here's hope for those parents that have children that want to say they don't understand God and they don't want to believe in him right now. Everybody dealt with it. It's right here in the Bible. See, it says when when Isaac was sitting up and Jacob came to him and brought him the food that Rebekah had made for him and covered him in the lamb's hair. Isaac says to him, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? Right? Because he sent Esau out to go hunting, to go kill something. And here real quick, Esau's now back and he's got this tasty stew. And Isaac is like, you know, I'm old. But I know it takes longer than that to go out and kill something, skin it, cut it up, put it in and make a stew out of it. It just, it just that's just not possible. And he says, how is it, son, that this is, could happen? And, and, and what does Jacob say? He, he answered Isaac, because the Lord, your God, granted me success. He didn't say the Lord, my God. He didn't say the Lord, our God. He said the Lord, your God, granted me success. 
So maybe Jacob didn't believe in this God, even though Abraham had told him all of those stories and Isaac had told him all of these stories. He just didn't get it. But then when he's at his lowest point, when he's laying there on the ground with a rock as a pillow, God opens his mind and his heart and comes to him and says, look, this is all real. And the promise that I made to Abraham, the promise that I made to Isaac, is the promise that I make to you. Even though everything that you've done to this point in your life goes against everything that I've ever said, I'm still going to bless you. Because that's who I am. It has absolutely nothing to do with you or the life that you've lived or anything that you've gone through. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. It's all about me. It's all about God. See, when he's down to nothing, he's laying there on that rock. Rabbi Lawrence Kushner imagines this as Jacob's thought to himself. I've been lying to myself for a long time, too long. And this is where Jacob considers, perhaps for the first time, that the world doesn't actually revolve around him. This realization made him sad and humble. But listen, this is the miracle and why this story is true and holds truth for all of us today. The miracle of this story is... Just what I said a couple seconds ago, that Jacob didn't earn God's blessing. God gave it to him because God wanted to. Jacob's broken family, Jacob's painful life, Jacob's cold heart didn't stop God from blessing him. Nor did it stop life from happening to him. God wasn't absent in Jacob's hard time, nor did he cause them to be there for punishment or cruelty. They're simply part of his life. Parts of the of things that he need to endure. Parts and reasons of things that he could not possibly imagine. But things that he needed to live through. And God was there with him all the time. God was there the whole time. And he knew that because God was right in front of him now in that desert on that starry night. That there was no denying that God is real. And God is nothing like Jacob imagined. And all of us come to that realization sometime. He couldn't be convinced by Abraham or Isaac. He couldn't be convinced by anyone around him. But God will make it known in God's time. He also learned that there were others other people that God also loved just as he loved Jacob. And he finally understood that God's love for him did not take away God's promises from him. In fact, he was part of that love and all we share and should share with each other. God's blessing is enough to cover all of humanity. When we finally discover that it's unsettling, but it's not devastating. And in a way it's comforting It gave Jacob a sense that God was bigger than anything he had ever realized before. And now he knew one of faith's most important lessons. That if we can set ourselves aside, we will not perish. But we will learn something about God. So allow God to work in and through your lives. To open your hearts like he did Jacob. Allow him to show him, to show you who he is and to use your life in a way that will show others the love that God has for all of us.